Hello, all you lovely people. We are here at Kilbourne Dam at the Wisconsin Dells. The dam's actually over there, uh, like in front of me, but we're a little bit downstream where the water is a little bit nicer. And uh, hopefully we can get something besides carp here. Maybe there'll be some buffalo here, but maybe, just maybe, there will be the giant gato fish. So we're gonna set up and see what we can get. There are also some ancient fish of doom down here that we're gonna try to catch. Let's take a little stroll this way. A bunch of pleasure boaters and the duck tours actually does come around here. I really hope that boat doesn't come too close to shore because my poles are casted fairly far out. I don't know how deep that water is. I do not want my line getting tangled in a boat motor. But either way, uh, Wisconsin Dells, I just talked to another guy down here and he was only catching uh, carp. But I know there are carp, walleye, drum, and even sturgeons. Now, sturgeons you can only target during September, but sturgeons, the most uh, common thing they bite is worms and you don't really target anything with worms. So if you catch one, just throw the lake sturgeon back. There are some big ones here though. Hopefully I can get a buffalo or something big. But uh, I'm actually looking towards nightfall when the minnows come in. When the minnows actually come in, I will catch the minnows since we're above Parade Sac. I'll catch the minnows and use the minnows as bait. And uh, that'll actually be much better fishing than using worms because minnows are far better bait here than worms. So let's see what we can get here. Every time I've gotten a fish, I feel like it's snagging me on something. But this time I finally got it. I think it's a carp. It's, there's like a giant snag line out there. I don't really know what it is. And I've gotten cooked on it every time, but I finally got one. Finally got one now. No, it's a red horse, but it's a big red horse. It's a pretty big red horse. So this is what uh, has been getting me. These are short-faced red horses, but this is a decent size one. Might be my PB, I don't know. Not really sure. Probably like two pounds, three pounds. But yeah, it's either a short face or a river. I don't really know. I think it's a... Uh, I think it's a short face by looking at it because the face looks kind of weird, so therefore it's a short face. All right, I finally got a fish. There seems to be a lot of these fish out there and that's probably what's been pulling me into snags. Huh, short face red horse. This one's pretty big, probably two or three pounds. There's actually, if you can see, there's actually like little blood splots right here where he's been attacked. So there must be like a greater fish of death down here or something. Short face red horse, not a bad first fish. All right, sucker. You're going back in the water now. I'm wearing my water shoes so I can just let you go right there. There you go. All right, I had to move from over there because for some reason, there's like a tree over there or something like 15, 20 yards out or like 10 yards out. And I lost quite a few things to the tree, including my flicker shad, which is like one of my favorite lures. So I'm gonna have to buy another one of those. I mean, this lure will work just as well here. I don't think the water is like overly deep here and it dives down a couple feet. So I think I'm okay with this one, but I'm kind of pissed off I lost the uh, flicker shad. So here it's much more sandy and much, much less rocky, which is what I actually want. And I think there are gonna be more minnows that come in here at night anyway. So it's a better place for me to get some fish later on. So hopefully we have some more luck. Sunset, uh, didn't really see it today. It was probably behind the trees. And uh, we're getting to that point where fish will actually come in and I'm hoping to get like a really big fish here. Either one of the deadly fish or maybe a buffalo or a big, big carp will actually hit because I know they are all here. All right, I got a fish. Switched on the number four hook. Got the number four hook. It's not very big, but it doesn't feel like a fish that wouldn't hook on a number one. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't feel extremely big. It's a gato fish and I just got lucky, but I think it's a drum. Or that, it's a flathead, but I'm pretty sure it's a... Yeah, it is a drum. Small drum, yeah. Fortunately, the Dells is actually infested with these things, and there's really not much you can do to avoid them, but this should have been able to hook on the number one hook. I've hooked these on as big as two aughts, so one shouldn't have been too challenging. But uh, yeah, freshwater drum for today. Not much to show a freshwater drum. Weird yellow coloration on the belly, pretty small. If uh, these keep biting, I'm gonna use these as cut bait. But uh, freshwater drum, not too bad, not too bad. All right, freshwater drum, you get to go back because I don't want to use you as cut bait. Maybe one of your brethren, but not you right now. So you get to go back. There you go, drum, there you go. Swimming off. Well, that was interesting, a drum. I don't think that's what was uh, kind of like taking my bait, nibbling, and then leaving because the drum would hit on one and would definitely hit on the fours before and it wouldn't require a small, small hook to actually hit. So hopefully I can get like a smallie in the fading hours or maybe a walleye after dark on the 
casting because I actually do like catching things in the cast. It sucks that I lost my flicker shad, but I'm, I have plenty of other Rapalas, so it should work. Got another fish, I believe. That's heavier than just the bait. Sometimes with the nine, sometimes with the nine foot pole, it's kind of hard to tell, but that is another fish. I think it's probably another drum, although like it's not really fighting. Well, I don't really know. Oh, it's a carp. It's just not a drum. Oh, it's a red horse. It's a red horse. Another red horse sucker. Looks like the Dells has a lot of these. Red horse. Short face red horse. This one's quite a bit smaller than the first one, and it's just going berserk right now. All right, man, calm the hell down, red horse. It's a good thing it's soft sandy, so it's not killing itself on the rocks, but short face red horse, another one. All right, fish, I like you, so I'm gonna go a little bit deeper and just put you in the water here, then like singe off. There you go, there you go, fish. Just note on the cost of fishing. So the thing is like, let's talk about worms, because that's probably one of the most common baits. I'm sure everyone has used night crawlers for fishing if you use bait fishing. Um, so a box of worms costs about four bucks in Wisconsin, right? And if you're an everyday fisherman like me, you probably go through a box once every two or three days. I mean, in the summer you might do once every day, but in the winter you don't fish every day. And sometimes like you'll use cheaper bait like corn. Uh, other times like, you know, you'll use like one worm, catch a bunch of bait, like catch a bunch of cut bait like bluegills and use that. Uh, and that actually happens to me a lot during the summer. Like I use a worm to catch like small live baits, small cut baits, and I'll use those instead of worms. So I won't use that many worms per day. However, you know, it still averages out to me maybe one box every two days, one box every three days. If you're buying 180 boxes per year, which I'm sure a lot of everyday fishermen do, you multiply that by four, that's 320 bucks, I mean $720 worth of bait each year. Now, then it actually starts to make a difference. I know a lot of you are like, you know, support your local bait shops. That's cool and all, but you know, for what I buy a lot of the worms at Walmart because I get the same quality worms, but I get 18 of them for the price of 12. So saving one third of my cost on 720 bucks, you know, that's I save 240 bucks a year. Now that's not a lot. That's like an extra fishing pole or two, which I would actually buy at the fish. I, I would buy at the bait shop anyways, or like an extra flicker, sh couple of flicker shads or, um, you know, lures. And I buy plenty of stuff at the bait shop. I get all my like, I get all like um, my restrungs on my string at the bait shop as well. So I buy plenty of stuff at the bait shop, but for generic stuff like weights and worms, which you buy just tons and tons of each year, it makes sense to actually just buy them at a big department store because they cost a lot less and they're the same thing. So, uh, you know, I know you got to think about the local economy and the bait shops and stuff, but you got to also think about your own economy, especially if you are not super duper uber rich, which I'm guessing most of you aren't like me. All right, first darkness fish. Well, first darkness fish that stayed on. Plenty of darkness fish before this that didn't stay on. I think it's a drum because that's what mostly is here. And that's actually even a problem. It's actually a big problem, even when I'm uh, using minnows because they just infest this area. That is a freshwater drum. If I catch too many more of these, I will sacrifice them to the elder catfish gods. But I would want a smaller one than this to sacrifice to the elder catfish gods. So this guy's lucky, he gets to go home. All right, drum, I know, I know. You wanna be free. There you go, drum, swim off. Wouldn't mind a small drum or a small white bass though, cause uh, I do need something to sacrifice the elder catfish lords, but I don't like cutting large fish cause it's kind of a hassle. So uh, the large fish, larger fish get to live. But if I catch like a four inch drum, it's being sacrificed. All right, something else has pulled my line. I'm pretty sure it's still on. Yep, it's another drum. They're switching to the minnows. And even though they'll bite the minnows, they don't bite, well, they do bite them as much as the worms, but I'm gonna try to get some minnows. I do think it's another drum. And if it is, oh, I think this is a really small one. All right, he is going to be sacrificed to the elder catfish lords. You hear that drum? You're going to be sacrificed to the elder catfish lords. No, not the elder catfish lords. Sorry, drum, you are the unlucky one. Just right before I put the minnows on, I got a bite on the cut bait. It seems pretty gato, and I think it's pretty big. I think I'm just gonna turn the thing up just a little bit, just in case it breaks my 50 pound braid, which it probably won't. It, it's, Something bit the cut bait. It's definitely a fish. It's not a turtle. Uh, I think it's 
It might be a flathead because it's not darting like a channel would or it's... Okay, now it's trying to dart. Maybe that's a channel. I don't know. It was cut bay, so... Odds are on channel, definitely. I've never actually caught a big fish at Wisconsin Dells. Either that or it's a sturgeon, but I've never actually had a sturgeon bite on cut bait. But I know like the white sturgeons do bite on cut bait. I think it's too powerful to be a turtle, but it actually feels really heavy. Well, oh, there it is. I don't think it's a carp. That was a small carp that just swam by. But I doubt this is a carp. The carp don't bite cut bait. At least I don't think so. It does feel pretty heavy and turtles don't fight this hard. I think it might be a pretty decent fish. Oh, now it's, oh, there you go, there you go. Oh, that feels like a carp. Now, oh my God, it's taking a lot of drag. It's taking drag like crazy now that it's coming near shore. But the cool thing about this shore is that it's not, oh man, this is what I've been waiting for all day, man. How big is, oh, that's a big fish. That is a big fish. That's a flathead, yes, yes. It's a flathead gato fish. It's very gato. That might be like a 15, 16 pounder as well. A flathead gato fish. Yes, hallelujah. I will pounce in the water to get that fish, my friends. If it gets stuck on a jam, because that thing ain't getting away from me. Oh yeah, flathead, oh, it doesn't want to come in. All right, gato-ish fish, you're coming in regardless if you want to or not. Oh man, this guy's fighting. This is, this is bigger than 10, definitely bigger than 10. That's very gato, it's highly gato-ish. Very, very nice. It's coming in, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's coming in, it's coming in. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what I've been waiting for all day. The mighty flathead gato fish. This one, I don't know if it's 20, but it's definitely bigger than 10. It's definitely more than 10, but don't know if it's 20, could be 20. It's probably pretty close to 20, but there, there it is. The mighty flathead gato fish. The mighty flathead gato fish. All right, gato fish. I think it's time that you gato up here. I think I landed it, folks. The flathead gato fish. The flathead gato fish. All right, nice fish. Very, very nice fish. All right, guys, this is a 22 pound fish of greater gatoness. It's very, very gato. The infuriating thing is, it's about one pound short of my all time PB freshwater fish, but nonetheless, a PB uh, flathead catfish, about two pounds larger than the last flathead catfish I caught at Johnson's Creek. The fish of greater gatoness. Very, very gato. My friends, this fish just made my day, so it is now time to let him gato on back to his home. The fish of greater gatoness. All right, gato fish. There you go. Take a little bit of time to get your bearing straight. But uh, I also think I need to uh, help him a little bit with that. Huh? There he goes. There he goes. Very. Very gato, the fish of greater gatoness. Thanks for the fun, fish. Thanks for the fun. Man, what a thrill. That's what I've been waiting for. I just wanted like two or three pounds heavier, so that could be my PB freshwater fish, but just one pound off. But that is indeed the fish of greater gatoness. I don't know if I can beat that tonight, but I got some minnows in the water now. But man, that's a rush. Biggest flathead of the summer, biggest flathead I've ever caught, 20, two pounds, one pound off my personal breast freshwater fish. Definitely still looking for the PB freshwater fish. Hopefully I get another even bigger one tonight, but I am very, very happy with that. Thank you, Lord. Something took my drum head. Something took the drum head. It's not as big. Oh, maybe it is. I don't think it's as big, but it still feels pretty heavy. And it's fighting, it's fighting like a flathead again. Oh my God, could this be two big flatheads in one night? That's just insane. This is like Flathead Haven at the Dells. Oh my gosh. Same freaking night. That's insane. I think it's a Flathead because channels usually dart and it's not darting. But it feels, it's pretty heavy actually. If it's a channel, it's a big one as well. Cottlefish Haven, yes, this is the night I've been waiting for. The night of legend. I want a 40 pound one this time. 
But I think this one's smaller though, unfortunately. Doesn't matter if it's like only 15 or so. I'll take it. I'll take it. it it's not a turtle. It's fighting way too hard to be any turtle. Unless it's like one of those leatherbacks that swam into Wisconsin somehow from the sea. But oh my gosh. I think it's another flat. Yeah, it's another flat. It's not as big, but it's another flat. Oh, it made a big splash. That's another flathead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh, it bit the bloody one. It, they like bloody bait. There's a lot of flatheads here, folks. No one's logged a big one here, but oh my gosh, there's a ton of them here. This one's probably only like 15 or, well, maybe like 12 or 10, but it's another, oh, it's a fish of greater gatoness. It's very feisty for its size. A fish of greater gatoness. It looks like they like the cut bait. Whoever told you that cut bait doesn't catch flatheads? Liars, dirty liars. They definitely catch flatheads. I still think live bait is better by the ways, but cut bait will catch flatheads just fine. The fish of greater gatoness. So many gato fishes. So many gato fishes. This one's probably like 12 or 13, but it's still a fish of greater gatoness. So we'll take it. 50 pound braid coming in clutch. And again, 16 pound flathead gato fish. They are gatoing today. They are definitely gatoing today. They're really far out though. So you have to have a long pole to throw cup bait out there. But man, they are gatoing. All right, this gato fish is gonna gato his way on back into the water as well. Check this bulk. It's not quite as big as the other one, about six pounds smaller than the other one. But man, he's gatoing. Back into the water he goes. There you go, gato fish. There you go. A little bit more lively than the other one. Man, two gato fish in the same day. Two big ones, too. Man, that was such a rush. 116 and 122 pound flathead gato fish. One pound away from breaking my all time best freshwater fish. That was what I achieved when I was like yay small. Because uh, actually, I think my dad helped me reel that. And that was like a 23 pound carp way, way back, decades ago. But ever since I started recording, that is definitely my best freshwater fish, 22 pounds. Still looking for 25 plus, but came pretty close tonight. Tonight was a thrilling night. Probably almost the last time I'll head up to the Dells in the fall, but I will be fishing on the Rock and the Wisconsin closer to Madison and probably in the Madison chain as well in the next couple of weeks. And then get ready for winter, maybe do some ice fishing, maybe go to the heated lake in Columbia, but hopefully we can get a gigantic fish that way. All right, that is the uh, episode. Hope you had fun. Check out my other social media, like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button, and I will join you on the next fishing adventure.